Hello and welcome uh, to another uh, quarter with Storytel. Uh, I'm Jonas Delander, CEO of Storytel, and on my side I have... Yeah, Sophie uh, Settergren, uh, CFO for Storytel. Mm. I'm going to share with you some of the highlights of the first quarter in 2018. Uh, it was a nice quarter. Indeed it was, yes. Mm. We're happy. Uh, the subscriber base increased uh, year on year by 51% to 578,000 subscribers. And we have this uh, uh, goal for the year to, uh, to come to 800,000 subscribers. And we think we're well on track to that. On the revenue side, uh, year on year growth is 43%. Uh, and uh, we have the annual 2018 goal to reach 1 billion Swedish krona, which is a huge milestone for us. And then looking at uh, the international uh, part of the business, uh, international streaming now makes up 45% uh, uh, of the total business. And uh, this is also a, a goal we have this year to surpa surpass 50%. Uh, so a majority of sales coming from international markets rather than Sweden. And then finally, we launched Iceland in Q1. And also after Q1, we launched uh, in April United Arab Emirates, UAE. And then now in May, we launched Turkey. So um, uh, a quarter packed with news and, and good development. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then we also had a very exciting news uh, coming out uh, this morning, Jonas, right? Yes. You're talking about these things on the table here? Yes, exactly. So what is this? This is um, an e-book reading device. So we're finally launching a way to read e-books in the Storytel service uh, on a dedicated device. Uh, so this is something we think uh, can become really, really big on the markets we're at. We know that Amazon launched Kindle 10 years ago on the US market, and I think they've sold something like 100 million devices. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And looking at the, uh, the, the Swedish market, which is our main market, uh, the ebook is still very, very tiny. And it's all about audiobooks, uh, in part thanks to Storytel. So, yeah. This is a cool uh, innovation. Yeah, and we have quite a lot of uh, e-books uh, in our service, actually more e-books than, than audiobooks, but yeah, there haven't been really a way to, to consume these books uh, yeah. on a good device. So this is uh, yeah, really exciting. The, price, the price would be uh, 999 uh, Swedish krona, uh, and uh, you will uh, have to have a Storytel uh, subscription also to, to read on the device. Exactly. So you actually log in with your Storytel subscription on the device uh, and use Wi-Fi or an uh, internet sharing mobile hotspot. And then you can download the books onto your device and read it offline on your vacation or on the plane or wherever yep. you like. So a good uh, thing to have with you on your summer vacation this summer. Yeah. And that will come for customers in Sweden, Denmark and Finland uh, now in, in uh, June. So that's exciting. And we have uh, Derek La Liberté from, from ABG with us uh, today. So Derek, you had a few questions for us. So hi guys, and uh, thanks for having me uh, after another successful quarter. Uh, so looking at the f first quarter, you posted a very uh, impressive growth of 95% in the international business. Uh, also mentioning that the Netherlands uh, stood out and exceeded your own uh, expectations. Uh, could you also give some details around how the other significant uh, international markets are faring, uh, which contributed the most to uh, total growth in the quarter, uh, and perhaps also provide some color on how the early work is uh, progressing in the newly launched uh, markets? Uh, yes, uh, so that's, uh, that's correct. Uh, and uh, uh, international markets are now making up for more than 70% of our total growth. Uh, on the way to, to surpass 50% of total sales, as, as Jonas mentioned uh, in the beginning. And Holland was, uh, yeah, was uh, standing out uh, this quarter, grew with 8,000 uh, subscribers. Uh, we also had uh, very good growth in, in Finland and in Poland. Uh, and in both those markets, we, we have been struggling a little bit uh, in the beginning with the content. Uh, now we have a very strong content catalog in both uh, those markets. Uh, and that, of course, correlates to the churn and the, the customer satisfaction. Mm. Uh, and, and content catalog is really important for any market we start. I mean, in the beginning, typically you have a, a quite weak catalog and then we start producing. We get maybe some big publishers coming in with their content catalog. And then we can see how, 
how sales start picking up and how people become lo- more loyal. Yeah, and I mean we we can quite easily monitor the way uh, our customer read and we know uh, how many books or how many hours uh, they they should consume in order to to appreciate the service and feel uh, that they they want to pay for the service. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, looking at some of the newer markets, uh, we have Russia and Spain, uh, where we've been now for a couple of quarters, and we are ramping up uh, investments there. Uh, and uh, during this quarter, we we spend some uh, some money <laughs> on marketing in those countries, uh, and we can see that the customers are coming into the service. Uh, in terms of growth, uh, they can be compared to to Finland and Poland. And then uh, the the latest markets uh, or market that we launched uh, was Iceland. And I mean, even though it's a fairly small market with around thir- uh, 300,000 inhabitants, uh, we can conclude that we had a very strong launch, mm. uh, the best launch ever, actually. So yes, indeed, a very yeah. good adoption uh, already in that market. Yeah. And we can see Russia, I think, is worth mentioning that that's, uh, that's trending very well as well, according to plan. And then we have some exciting new markets, which we will need to follow up on uh, uh, the next couple of quarters. Yes. Uh, with regards to profitability, I was wondering if um, uh, you could break down for us uh, the quarter on quarter change in contribution margins in the Swedish as well as the international business, uh, referring to marketing spend, uh, market share of consumed content, etc. Uh, yes, so so for Sweden, uh, we had the best uh, contribution profit so far, uh, and contribution margin was also on a very high level, o- over 35% for this quarter, uh, which is really, really good. And, and breaking it down into the areas uh, which you brought up, Derek, uh, starting with uh, our own market share, uh, I mean, that can, of course, fluctuate a little bit quarter per quarter, depending on what type of uh, books we publish. But I mean, looking overall the last couple of years, it's been on a quite constant uh, level. So what's really paying off now in Sweden is that we have a very strong subscriber base. And even though we spend as much or more o- on marketing and content uh, relative to sale, that is uh, going down. Uh, going into international markets, I mean, we are expecting a negative contribution uh, margin uh, since we are now investing a lot in, in our new markets uh, and we are in more than more than 10 markets. Uh, Given that that uh, uh, sales is is quite low in the beginning, uh, marketing and content relative to sales is, is of course high. So that's that's according to our uh, plan and our targeted EBITDA level for for 18. Yep. Looking at the way you price your product, um, uh, do you believe the current setup is the way forward, uh, or should we expect a more differentiated model going forward? seeing as Netflix and Spotify, for instance, are offering family packages. Yeah, th- that is correct. I mean, some subscription models, they have introduced other, other um, sc- subscription types, like family subscription, for instance, is quite common. I mean, if you look at the, the growth uh, uh, pillars that we have in the business, uh, you can look at the, the audiobook part, which is an emerging uh, format that we've developed now in the over the past 13 years. Uh, and then we've seen that uh, this uh, audiobook uh, business is possible to actually scale outside of Sweden. So we're now launching up a, a number of different markets where we can grow an entirely new market. Uh, and then we have other uh, book related uh, formats like the one we're just launching today, actually, which is the ebook, where we see that we can, outside of the audiobook, ensure that book lovers actually read ebooks as well. So that's another way for us to grow. And the fourth way for us to grow uh, would then be, as you say, that we start di- differentiating our offering and in particular look at uh, ways that uh, the families uh, uh, can, can group their listening and, and uh, pay it uh, under one single account. There are other op- opportunities as well, of course, to limit uh, the access to the catalog in some way here by being able to provide the subscription with a lower price. Uh, so there's a, a number of different possibilities that we are looking at and uh, hope to be able to, to roll out in the coming year. In Q4 you mentioned that Sweden and Denmark combined, including print publishing, uh, are up operating at an EBITDA margin of around uh, 9%. Uh, looking ahead, are there any of the other markets uh, that you expect to be able to stand on their own feet within the next couple of years, say? Uh, and in that case, in which order would that be? 
Uh, yes, so I mean we ha we have one more market where we are profitable, and that's Norway. Uh, we have been for for the last uh, couple of years. Uh, and then looking at the other markets, I mean, what's important for us is that we add value to the customer and that we see that we have a good ROI on our marketing and, and content investment. So profitability is not uh, the number one goal, but of course it's, it's important that we can show that we have an underlying uh, profitable business. Uh, and I mean, as long as we see in the in the new markets where we have a, a good start and we are quite uh, alone on the markets, uh, we premiere uh, growth before uh, profitability in those markets. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, hopefully we build up a very strong position so that we can over time start uh, having a very profitable business uh, because people feel that our service creates a lot of value and it's a, it's a nice place to be. Yeah. Then maybe one exception <coughs> or one one strong candidate could be Iceland, maybe uh, because it is a, a fairly small market, and by by small means we can we can reach our target group. So yeah. so that market will probably be be profitable uh, quite fast. So you previously mentioned that you're working on a new uh, tech platform. Uh, could you give a, a status update on how this work is uh, progressing, and also pro provide some color on how? Uh, you think this uh, will improve your product offering to the consumer uh, and if it will enhance the way y you analyze uh, customer data and uh, behavior and so on. Exactly, Derek. I mean, the tech platform is incredibly important for us and uh, is something we continuously invest uh, a lot of resources and time into. And uh, just looking at the status right now, I mean, we feel we have a very quite a scalable platform that uh, has built a very good backend now that ensures that we can source uh, a lot of audiobooks and ebooks into the servers and the service. Uh, and we're now on our way to internationalize the platform so that it will be possible to, to listen to books from any language really and read books from any language uh, any part in any part of the world in any of our businesses. So that's quite exciting. Uh, and looking at intelligence in particular and how we are working with uh, with uh, data and uh, pro uh, helping using data to, to, to provide a better service. We've now built up a very strong intelligence team that is uh, continuously working on segmenting the different customer groups and, uh, and finding ways to personalize the service so that Sophie doesn't get the same recommendations as I do, but that we are actually having two completely different uh, uh, experiences when we use Storytel. Yeah, and I mean, we're also using it a lot for our publishing activities. So we said intelligence team are very much involved in, in, in all teams uh, within Storytel. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting uh, way to, to use this uh, big data that we have and improve the service and uh, our publishing activities and also just making it easier for the staff to understand uh, what they're doing and what effect uh, different decisions have. How do you view the expected increased availability of audiobooks uh, at libraries uh, and the fact that the largest uh, bookstore in uh, Sweden, Akademi Bokhanden, is planning to la launch its own streaming service? Uh, is this mainly something you view as um, uh, an overall market growth uh, improving or uh, do you view it mainly as uh, competition heating up? Yeah, that's true. We have, uh, I mean, we have good competition now. I think on on all our markets, uh, and uh, I think if if it does something to our business and the way we operate is that we we make sure we are staying on our toes and that we keep developing the service so that we have the best offering that that anyone would get who, who would like to listen to and read audiobooks on their mobile phone, and also on their, of course, uh, storytel reader device. Um, so looking at the Swedish uh, market in particular, uh, we've had. Uh, a number of competitors over the years and in the in the past couple of years we have two competitors that have invested heavily in, in marketing and now we have a, a third entrant or fourth entrant coming in so yeah that's exciting it just you know helps helps us to improve even more and hopefully grow the market even more yeah um, so i think that's something we need to expect on on all the markets that you know once once the numbers get larger then then more entrants will come and offer the same type of service Okay guys, thanks uh, uh, for having me this quarter and uh, look forward to talking to you again next quarter. Thank you Derek for, uh, for asking us these questions, that's really helpful. So have a nice day. Yeah, thank you Derek. So uh, yeah, Sophie, we have some uh, thoughts about the uh, coming quarter. 
Q2? Yes, so Q2 is uh, is coming up, and as usual, we we provide a forecast. And uh, I mean, we, yeah, we think that uh, we are in line with our uh, target. We we um, talked about uh, uh, in the year end report, uh, and for Q2, we think we will end up uh, on an average uh, subscriber base of 620,000 subscribers. So over 600,000. Yeah, that's quite good. That's yeah. nice. That's another milestone. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, and I don't know about you, but the sun is shining. Uh, I'm really excited to go and uh, have a good read now and uh, read my next book. Okay, let's okay. do it. <laughs> <See you>. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Bye.